Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Man 2, The Return of Durant, movie, thoughts. I suppose I will start by saying that I consider one of the bigger problems with this movie to be that it basically copies the structure of the first movie. It rearranges a few scenes, but basically it's the same thing. They even... They, they introduce a new character so that they have someone to do the Darkman creation scene too, because obviously it couldn't happen to Darkman again. I guess it's good that good for them that this time it doesn't lead to an anti-hero who will take down the entire game. They really should look into changing their methods. No wonder they needed Durant to come back to revitalize business. I mean. Heck, for all we know, they've been creating and fighting anti-heroes the, all the time he's been gone, if they just keep... And obviously, the creation of not Dark Man, uh, White Man. That did not sound as racist in my head, I swear. It's much less inspired than the first one. It, it really feels like a, a group of teen, teenager fans of the first movie tried to recreate that scene and they didn't appreciate what, how, how that scene was made to work. It's just the, the filming and the stuff they do to them, it's much less compelling. You know, basically, they rush him across a table, because it's a bar fight, I guess. And they, they hold down his, his, one side of his face on the, what's it called, like a, a stove top. Granted, that is pretty gruesome, but it's, it's no nuclear swirly, come on. And... They force him to eat a dead toad or something, I'm not sure. I've never been entirely sure what that is in the thing. And that's kind of it. And add to that, the dude is just not thinking straight. I would have signed. I gotta tell you, I would not have kept insisting no when they just kept. I mean, and it's not even that the moment he says no, they just push, put him through all that. Evidently, they tortured him to try to get him because we see Durant stick it in his face and sign the paper. So they just kept doing that. until they killed him, and that was, yeah, I, I just, what kind of logic, I appreciate that it was the dude's dream, and it meant, a, excuse me, a ton to him, but, if they were offering, what was a million dollars or something, he could, he could buy another place for that dream to occur, it's not like they were trying to force him out, See, that would have made sense. They All they should have done was say that they wouldn't pay. That they... I'm not sure why Durant had to remain underground. Because Darkman finds out about him real quick. He, he knows that it's him with the, when the, he finds the finger gone. So there's nothing... 
and he suspects it when he sees that the other henchman was dead. So, yeah. But but yeah, if if Durant hadn't been underground, they would probably have just killed him. This is Durant is so much softer in this movie than he was in the first. You know, it's. I do like the line about, you know, that should we make the usual awful balls? Nah, we we gotta keep a low profile. Offer him money instead. That, yeah, that is what I like about the Dark Man series. Lines like that. Well, it's it's part of it anyway. One of the only parts represented in this movie. And the I I do like the scene of Peyton getting there too late with the the train and rushing and the whole thing that worked pretty well, and I do appreciate this sort of what, what do you call it? It's it's a it's, anyway they they're. They're holding up the two scenes against each other, basically. We have that it happened to Dark Man, and now he couldn't stop it from happening to someone else. Maybe he should become a vigilante then. And yeah, that that kind of thing. I, I can appreciate that. I just don't think that if if it had been the only thing, I would not be complaining about it. Or not much, anyway. But yeah, the, the movie just has... Durant throws an ex-employee who he thinks is embezzling him out of a building. Okay, from here it's a top building, and the first it was through a window. But still, is this ringing any bells? It is just... They, they copy-pasted the script of the first one, changed character names, and rearranged some some of the scenes, the, the order of some of the scenes, but on the whole, way too much that happened in the first happens again in this. And the whole thing with like the detective story thing, I, I appreciate seeing Darkman figuring out, you know, see, seeing him use his mind. I wish we'd have seen him use his tactics a bit more in this as well. But it just seems kind of obvious. I mean, wasn't it enough that first time? It's like he forgets that he finds the finger missing. And by the way, nice job, Durant, staying, you know, off the radar. You use your one, what's it called? Your one trademark, you know. I. It wouldn't have had the same impact if he hadn't done it, but I think it, if Darkman had checked and been like, oh, he still has all his fingers, I guess it can't be Durant. Because he figured it was Durant. He just heard on the news that it might be Durant. Because Durant's former associate just got killed. And he saw that associate meeting with David, making him that offer, and he came and broke up that uncomfortable situation excuse me, situation. If he had found all fingers intact, and then he's like, ah, maybe it's not him. And then it cuts to Durant with the cigar cutter. Ah, I wish I could have cut the finger off. You know, something like that. But he's staying low profile, so he doesn't. Just something like that. And then that, that brings me nicely into... What does Durant think about... Why doesn't he go after Darkman at all? Maybe there was some line and I missed it. If so, please point it out to me. But honestly, I did not hear any mention of him. It's, I, I didn't hear him getting reassured that, oh no, don't worry, Darkman is gone. Why wouldn't he be worried about that guy? He took out his entire force and, you know, 
laid waste to all his plans. Why wouldn't he be worried about that guy still? And he's like, no, it can't be. Why? Why can't it be? You, you see, you, you saw this guy come, come back from the dead, or so you thought, and be, because it wasn't even, if it was Strack who was like, no, he can't be, but literally, Durant was there. He saw the the, the bomb that, that lit the, so he knows that Darkman can survive. I don't even know why he would think the Darkman was gone. And I also don't know why Darkman hasn't kept up on this kind of, if maybe the movie had had Durant having to re-establish a gang, but no, there's a gang just waiting for him. And it's not even that they haven't done anything, it's just that, oh, we're getting outbid by other gun, gun runners. So, yeah, why didn't, why didn't Darkman completely eliminate the, the force? Why didn't he go back and check is Durant's old gang? Was there even anything of a gang left by the end of the first movie? Anyway, the... A scene like where, when Ivan... Darkman gets to Ivan. I, I do like the thing with he rolls out and Ivan is staring at his own face. Although, again, we saw that in the first movie. It's like they brought the character back out and they just didn't... They, they had new thematic to have him go through, but they didn't have any new gags for any, any cool things that he could engage in. Anyway, the... First, Darkman doesn't do a proper job of stopping Ivan, who, mind you, I think that was the guy who killed David, or at least he was the one given the order. I suppose Darkman wasn't there to hear that, but wouldn't he maybe try to investigate that? It seems, it, again, the first movie seemed like a much more violent dark man, and I didn't really see him... The, the end of the first movie was him embracing the monster, not him saying, this is not gonna, I'm not gonna do this ever again. It, it's like they, they, they watched the first movie and then the, the tape cut out before the end, and they just figured that he completely stopped doing vigilantism or something. You know, he's not, he doesn't do anything to Ivan, he just handcuffs him. And then Durant doesn't, and, and in general, Darkman does that in this movie. He also doesn't do anything to, he just hits, what's the, Eddie, I think, and leaves him there, and that's kind of it. I don't know, maybe he got lucky in the first one with similar stuff working out, but it just seems like, wouldn't he refine his methods? Anyway, he, yeah, so Durant is facing two Yvonnes at, at the end of the, you know, they have the exchange. I do like the thing with the pills. That was clever. I, you know, watching it tonight, I had forgotten that Durant didn't die like that. So when I saw him start, I was thinking, ah, it worked. And then suddenly it's like, oh, I got the pills. And it actually, yeah, he spits them in his face. That's great. And, you know, the line, Ivan never hands me my pills. Could have had a V8. Dude, did you not think about that option? It, the, gah. Anyway, Durant is faced with two Ivans. He doesn't know which switch at the end of the, you know, they're, they're having a fight. So both of them say, it's, it's kind of cute how all gentlemen come down here and then suddenly they're standing next to each other. But here we have this big, stupid cliche of the bad guy.
guy trying to figure out which is the good guy and which is one of his goons. I'm sorry, but the Durand of the first movie would not do that. He would just kill them both. He killed his henchmen for less. He... He didn't need much proof that Paulie was dirty now. He just... Actually, is it, is it dirty when... A criminal steals money from his own, or is that just being Robin Hood? Anyway, yeah, it, it. I don't know. Was Ivan supposed to be like the new Rick, the new favorite? And and the thing, the, the question he asked, you know, uh, Ivan had a hip replacement, and then they both go, "Oh, I'm, that's me. I have a hip replacement." I thought there was gonna be something where he like pointed to one of their legs, with a regular gun maybe, and said, I'm gonna shoot you in this leg, and, and like be, you know, if, if that was the leg, if that was the good leg, and he shot him, he would fall over because he can't stand on the hip of the, I don't know exactly what I was thinking, but something like that. But no, it's just, oh no, it's, it's me, it's me, and it's just, yeah. Pretty boring. And then he kills the wrong one, and then suddenly, what's her name? Lori is there. And... And, and we even have, have Durant also reveals his dastardly plan to Lori. You know, you have the, the Bond villain explaining what his evil scheme is. Yeah, th these were the cliches that were so nicely avoided, or at least made interesting in the first film. And here they are just for your consumption. There's, there's nothing special to it. I didn't mind the thing with the the, the right wing dude with the, the who wanted the this big ray gun kind of thing and the yeah I, and I I like that one line the right to bear arms uh, far right <laughs> cute. And they have this sort of Mexican standoff with... I, I did like that exchange. Commie bastard! Nazi... What was it? Nazi son of a bitch! Yeah, this, and they shoot each other as... <laughs> and he's even got the... It was like, young skinhead... Right hand man kind of thing. That was one of the, the, the jailbreak of the insane scientist. That was one of the nice surprises of the film. The, the bit where he's sitting there, ah, oh, I hate meatloaf, and then pfft, suddenly the wall explodes. And they actually have a, a nice little line as well with him. I, I don't remember the name. Professor Dr. Insano, I presume, by Durant. You know, very clever, like the... the that, that, I don't remember the name, but there was this dude who went to the, somewhere, some, some rainforest or something, and then people came to find him, and they were like, oh, doctor or something, I presume, and it's a cute little, I don't even know if that's intentional, but that's what it made me think of. But then they botch it later, by having him say, Basically, that phrase to someone else. I presume. Yeah. I am not entirely clear on what the plan was when Peyton disguises himself as Eddie and then goes to that meeting. I guess it's. I guess I should appreciate that it surprised me that he didn't 
go insane and, and kill Durant right then, there, or try to kill Durant right then and there. They also have way too many unmaskings. In the first movie, there's like one time where some, and that's not even Durant, that's Strack, where he gets unmasked, and it's that burnt off face. Here we have one dream sequence, we have with the, was maybe around the, the Ivan thing, I think. They have the, the unmasking thing, and yeah, it's just, it loses its impact, and it's not interesting. The thing that worked so well in the first one was that you didn't see it coming. You didn't think, even if you had figured out that that was Peyton, you didn't think that he was gonna get unmasked. You didn't think that the bad guy was that smart. Anyway, yeah, the the, the rage and he and then he just he's just daydreaming and it's it's a nice tense scene. I will admit that. And then Lori is there. I do like this sort of subplot of her trying to get out of sex work through this million dollars. And that she's, you know, she eventually, she did not just get the beauty of, of the gene pool. Cena, Cena Warrior Princesses, Gabrielle. Yeah, thank you. I, I appreciate that. I, I very much appreciate that. I, I never mind seeing her. She did not just get the beauty. She also got the... Brains other than relating to science you work, clearly, because she's taking the money. And she comes in and, and Westlake mentioned Durant, and she hasn't met Durant before that. And, and Westlake said that it was Durant that gave the order to have your brother killed. And then she's like, Durant, oh please call me Robert, and and he's got the cigar cutter, which also is the thing. That was how he lost his finger, you know. And that actually is a decent enough scene. Like I said, I have no idea what Westlake was actually there to do. I don't know what he was hoping to gain if that wasn't the way it went. Maybe he just hoped that that was the way it went because that seems like borderline The Dark Knight's Joker levels of figuring things out or knowing how things would go, honestly. But I did like that they sort of have this, he's out on a mission, sort of, and it goes wrong. But again, just it occurred to me just as I was saying that, that happened in the first movie as well. So again, we just, there's... It treads so little new ground. I, I really wish that that wasn't the case. Excuse me. Maybe that more or less covers it. The whole thing with the reporter wasn't too bad. Excuse me. With her getting closer to proving that it was Durant. I, again, I'm a little unclear on why he needed that, because he seemed to know, basically, that it was Durant. I don't know, did... Maybe, maybe I missed a line about he's currently hiding. Durant is not where you maybe expect him to be. I mean, I could, I could maybe guess that he didn't go back to the mansion in the first movie, but still, did he just suddenly get... I mean, he seems to just, from one day to the next, be in this mansion. Actually, he seems to almost wake up there. I mean, he, like, wakes up, and the doctors say, oh, he's, you know, he's alive, and that's kind of it. He's in this mansion. Wouldn't Westlake... Again, if he was any kind of a vigilante... If he was really trying to keep, I don't know, maybe he just really thought that the whole Durant thing was gone and over. It just seems like, well, I don't understand why he doesn't find him. I would understand if they had started out hiding in this abandoned, in this condemned building, where they talk about, oh, but that's, 
they're just trying to build David's condemned building, so... Yeah, something like that. He was doing work in a condemned building. I'm not sure that's entirely safe. Maybe she did get the entire brains of the family. Maybe he just stumbled onto the synthetic skin breakthrough completely accidentally. Now... But, but yeah, yeah I, I didn't quite see why he needed the help of the reporter. And she, it didn't seem like she helped all that much. She got the, the you know, yeah, it's Durant because it's that this company that he used to, it's, it's kind of trying to balance it between being something that Darkman can use to continue his detective work and something that doesn't make her immediately break the story because obviously that would be too early in the film. And I find that it just ends up being entirely skewed in the on that end of the spectrum. It's entirely just something he can't use. Or something she wouldn't a story she wouldn't break. And it's not really it doesn't seem that useful to him that information. That well, it Yeah, yeah, Durand is connected to it. I yeah. And the, but I, I found it it worked decently enough, and it's it's fairly surprising when she does die. Maybe especially because I don't see how they could have gotten to her car so quickly. But yeah, I do think that yeah I I. Basically, I already said this, but I really think that the movie could have worked if Durant had been just publicly known. I mean, in the first movie, it was just kind of, well, authorities don't really have anything on him. Did that change in between movies? Did, did I miss some... Well, I guess they have the memorandum as the end of the first movie, but Strax dead. I don't know. And and it seems like if there was still a gang, they could easily have gotten back to the Strack building and, you know, burnt the memorandum or something. Because... I know, I just can't let this one go. Darkman apparently isn't a vigilante. He isn't at all following up on this stuff that he was... Yeah. One quick thing I wanted to mention. I like how this did show sort of this limited contact between Darkman and the awkward nature of contact between Darkman and the rest of the world. There's that girl, I think, who, you know, a ball bounces over to him and he hands it back and she's like, thank you. And there's this the moment of, could I possibly still be accepted? And yeah, I thought that worked. I thought that was one of the things that really, and that was not that similar to something in the first. Actually, that's almost like a contrast to his meeting uh, his girlfriend in the first, where it was very much not accepted and welcome. I suppose that more or less covers it. What was the deal with the laser in the office of... I guess that's the little bit of sort of quirk and uh, camp. Well, the movie is camp, but... Yeah, the, the laser in David's office, or lab, I guess. It's just suddenly, just, just don't let anybody move if you don't want to be fried. And Durant makes like a crack about, you know, laser something. And then he fires it, and then suddenly Ivan has snatched out the, the plug thing. I, I don't know if... He had that the entire time, and it was just standing there ready to be used. 
why didn't he go for that sooner? Or, I don't know. Yes, I believe that comes up. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.